Hello everyone. So in today's video I'm going to be showing how I make collage papers um, in particular with repeat patterns. Now these papers here today I've used these stamps which are by an artist called Melanie Muir and she's a jewellery designer and these are used for um, pressing into clay but they really do work well for printing on paper as well so um, these are some of the designs that she has and I just love the organic shapes. So she's got a lot more designs on her website. I'll put the link down below for you if you're interested in having a wee look at them. Um, so I'll continue making some of these and I'll also use some other household objects I've got for like putting under your, your dishes or these were for holding tubes of um, sticky glue. A comb that I've cut up just to have a small section of it. Simple cardboard and some string that I've attached to a piece of mount board. So I'm going to repeat patterns with these and I'll show you various different ways and that I, that I do that. So some of the supplies I'll be using today are just a piece of Perspex because I'm going to use this for monoprinting on. I have a jelly plate for rolling out paint and um, pushing my stamps into. This is um, block printing ink which works better on a hard surface than it does on a jelly plate. And I've just got some um, acrylic paint. This is golden teal. It's um, quite opaque, so I like that one. And just got some little roller brayers um, to work with. And this is just some acrylic paint. So I'm going to be working either sort of dark on top of um, light papers or light colours on top of dark. So I'll be using some of my jelly prints that were perhaps not so successful and trying to add elements to these that I can use in sections of them in, in future collages. Okay. Now I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to place some of my dressmaking paper here and I'm going to try the comb see what happens with this change the direction every time I create a repeat pattern nice texture and technique. I mean you couldn't really get that mark with just drawing with a pencil or a pen so it's quite um what I like about the printmaking it's just a slightly different mark. I really like this page and I like how it's got the little bits of writing coming through in the background. So the, the bit underneath was just done with some ink and a brush just painted on loosely. I think I was just using up some ink that I had left. So that was sort of the first layer and then this is the 
second layer to create some interest. Okay, so this is this is actually a new brand I've got I found up at the range. It's called Art Studio Premium, and it's got a lovely range of colours. And it's it was quite inexpensive, one ninety nine for a big tube like that. So that's pretty reasonable for acrylic paint. I'm putting quite a thin layer on here. Try and do some. I've got some paper that I'd dyed with. I think this one was tea bags. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Quite soft. And this pink paper was dyed with avocado stones. That might be a future video showing you how I make these papers. <laughs> That worked really well with the soft pink. So on something that had a little pop of the orange coming through that might lift the collage at the end. So that was I use that.
nice effect. Mm. Here's an old piece of music notes. I'll try another print. The same block printing ink has a longer drying time than acrylics do, so you've got a bit more time to work with it. I was looking, I had made myself a little bar in them, I can't find it. A bar in is just like something that you can press down to uh, other than your hand, you know. I like how that's pulled up the previous print from the other page there. Melanie actually came to one of my in-person workshops and she said she took some of these along for me to try. Um, but it was interesting to see how she printed with a jelly plate because she's very meticulous as a jewellery maker. So well, I've seen how everybody's got different styles and ways of using it. Sparked ideas for her that she could use in future projects for her own yeah, jewellery. Don't like how that's a straight line. I think I'm just going to kind of mix it up a bit. Okay, that's another one done. Hmm, was a bit of a fail. Mm -hmm. Now that had the block printing ink. That's why that didn't work. Ooh, ghost print's a bit better. Ooh, I think I would use that a little bit. So what I'm doing is just writing, but not it's not really words, it's just letter shapes. There is a word for this, but I can't, I can't remember what it is for like lettering, but it's not readable, it's more like a sort of graphic element.
could be really angry and writing a horrible, <laughs> getting all your feelings out here. Little bit of form of therapy, <laughs> doesn't really make sense. This is just going to be ripped up anyway. But I won't do that live on camera. <laughs> Yeah, so it, because it didn't have the gesso on that one, it's um, picking up a lot more of the details. So it's just giving me a different line, a linear quality. So that's the one that's got the gesso um, prepared on the paper and that one's not got. So just get a different thickness line. Another way that I like to make marks in um, repeat patterns is using papers that I've already prepared with gesso, clear gesso. This is a tinted gesso and that's a clear gesso and white. So I can use tools like a bamboo dip pen or even a, a bit of stick just to make random marks. Feather works really well. So I'm going to get my feather. So you start getting more irregular lines that you couldn't really get with a pencil or a paintbrush. Oh, that's like putting your nails down a blackboard, sorry about that. I like that one with the grey tone underneath it. So I hope you've enjoyed watching and following along with uh, me as I make some papers that I'll be using in part two to make a finished piece. Um, if you're interested in using this block printing ink, I did a little test and I tried spraying it with a fixed tip and it didn't seem to work. It was still um, moving about when I added water. So you, could, you, you can use these for collage papers, but just be aware that you can't add water on top or in glue that's got a lot of water in it. It would need to be a, a glue that had um, like a yes paste or something like a Pritt stick, you know, so that it's not going to make this smudge. Um, but it is it does give a lovely line. It's just an alternative to, to using dip pens or so there's lots of different ways you can make collage papers. So just give you a little look through some of these. Uh, I'll put the supplies in the comments below. And I've also got another course out, which is a free one. So if you haven't joined up to that, if you go into the comments, which uh, shows how to make collage papers on an abstract landscape called The Essence of Landscape. And that is now free for anybody to join. Um, so you just have to sign up and you'll get the link through and you can watch that course. I'd be delighted if you came along and joined in with that one. So that was a lot of fun making these papers and I've got a lot of selection here to work with and I hope you picked up some uh, some good tips today. Okay everyone so thanks for watching. See you next time. Okay bye for now.